Hey guys, welcome to Bubble Man's World. I am back with Merlin. Hey guys. And this is Cooking with Merlin. <laughs> and we're going to be cooking. Hell yeah. With Merlin. As usual, some good food, some good dabs, and some good weed. We start off by rolling some joints. You got a couple of big nuggets there, hey? I always like to show the camera so they know what's going down. A little, little fatty Kush nugget. Yeah. Ooh, it's gassy. It is. That's what I like to smoke. I think a lot of people don't know what gas is. I think some people smell sativas and terpenoline and they call it gas. That ain't gas. It's yeah. not gas. Gasoline is Kush smoked knock you out. Right. Taste it's like. that smell right there. This exactly. is gas. Yeah. That's mm. the definition of gas. I mean, it literally has a gas smell. Yeah. <laughs> I did bring my, my banger here today. I've got a buddy that's going to be showing up. Another friend of mine, actually, uh, who's also very good friends with Patty, who you guys met last week on Cooking with Merlin when they produced those ridiculous fucking bomb-in, bomb sandwiches. Those were so good. Those were so good, bro. Yeah. I meant to make them again this week, actually. Oh. My girl was asking me. <laughs> Man, those were good. So yeah, Patty and Mike, who's going to be coming in a little bit. I don't know if Mike's going to be want, uh, want to be on camera. I suspect he probably won't care and he will join us. But uh, it's kind of neat, you know, doing these Cooking with Merlin shows and bringing in a new individual. Merlin's going to bring some guests in eventually as well mm -hmm. uh, here in the next couple of weeks that we'll be able to have. And I guess in the meantime... We will get stoned, yeah? I like that idea. We will get stoned. Why am I using the German accent? Because we're going to be cooking a German specialty today. Uh, Käse Spätzle, otherwise known as mac and cheese, but a little bit fancied up. It's an old-timey dish I've been having since I'm a little kid. That's and, awesome. Uh, like from make... mom and grandma. Exactly. That was like all I wanted from when I was a kid. When grandma came to come and see us, it was make Käse Spätzle. You know, I love the aspect of food. Um, how it connects generations, you know, and how we like... Everyone's got grandma's recipe. Of course, <laughs> you know, and being able to do grandma's recipe or a recipe similar to it, something that Merlin's got a history with, it just makes it that much more cool. And I love mac and cheese. Connects it with a memory too, which is, which is crazy. There's almost nothing else that can do that. Like a certain smell or taste that connects you to a, a memory of Truly. yours is pretty cool. Truly, as you light that Kush joint, I'm like flooding with Kush <laughs> memories. <laughs> the good days. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're going to hit the Ewok glass. I cleaned many, it up. How many years since you smoked a joint? Um, okay. Well, I, I usually say about 20, but then there's always people, I saw you light a joint. It's like, okay, yes. Someone did come up to me like four years ago at the Karma Cup, and they had a Canagar. And they were like, oh, would you mind, you know, lighting this? It was like an honor thing, right? Yeah. It, was, it was mostly, it was tons of hash. It was like 80% hash. But then it was wrapped in some leaves and there might have been some weed. So I said, you know what? Sure, I'll light it for you. I lit it, passed it on, didn't really smoke it. You know, it was and that was your last time. Well, and now people are like, you smoked a joint, I saw you. I was yeah. like, well, I lit the Canagar, but the last time I smoked a joint, for sure, was 20 years ago. We tricked people on the last one, too, with that hash. It looked totally <laughs> like a joint. I love it, too, because some guy from Humboldt was like, that's not a unique one-hitter. We've been smoking out of those for 20 years. I'm like, yeah, but not like paper ones. Yeah, like, they're the glass ones. Exactly. The glass and the ceramic, and they conduct heat, and they're just very different. They're not going to be as convenient and ease of use as, you know, being able to pick up. And it's not like the, the problem is, is the glass ones, unfortunately, because of... Yeah, like other drugs that made it, they look bad, right? You pull yeah. out a glass pipe like that, people sure. are thinking you're not smoking cannabis, right? So uh, I like those paper ones. It looks more like a cigarette. It's almost like when I'm drinking my water and everyone thinks I'm drinking vodka. <laughs> we were talking about that off camera before, but I'm sure you guys have seen my memo bottles, these very flat bottles. This is the one that looks the least like an alcohol container. Yet it still does have a little bit. What kind of vodka you got there today? <laughs> it's like I got the H2O vodka. The Sea Rock version. Sea Rock. <laughs> Berry flavored. <laughs> You've got the dabber, or did you put that away already? Oh, I'll grab it. Oh, thanks, brother. So, yeah, super excited with these series. You guys seem to be very um, re receiving them very well. It seems like a po positive. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, positive comments and positive feedback from everyone that's been watching the Cooking with Merlin's, Merlin series. Uh, he's close. We're good friends. It's kind of easy. 
And so we're going to try and keep pumping these out on yeah. the weekly, on the Sundays. And just, uh, I know a few of you have said, oh, it would be great if he used measuring cups. Well, it's not how we do. You have to follow the recipe. You just got to throw stuff in. Maybe yeah. what we could do is add the recipes at the end of it. To make there it you go. We'll exactly. put it in the comments. For yeah, me. I like the idea, yeah. you know. But I do love the fact that you don't measure things. <laughs> I just and do it. It's all to taste. Yeah. It's, it's amazing, dude. It's awesome. You no, know, we'll also try today is my girlfriend's brand Relax. We'll have some of these edibles. Nice. Well, dried banana chips infused. Two let's and a half let's start right a piece. Now. Very unique and novel product that you can mm -hmm. find here in Canada. Probably the only edible that's a fruit uh, that I know of. And the only edible with natural fats found in it. Chill. Sure. Delicious to you. No cannabis flavor whatsoever. None. Just done with straight distillate, so there is none. Excellent. But the bioavailability is really there mm. because of the... Gotta be. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because of the natural fats. So it really helps, right? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I love it. Now you can check that out. R-I-L-A-X-E. Sold across Canada. Pretty cool little idea. You know, he's got like apricots. Cherries. Cherries, bananas. And mangoes. And mangoes. That's right. All good fruit, in my opinion. Let's get ourselves dabbed up. Yes, sir. I don't know what I'm going to hit here. I think I'm going to... Yeah, I think I'm going to go for a little strawberry banana. Mm -hmm. Oh, Merlin also went picking the other day. He went and picked a ton of chanterelles at the spot that we were at the other day. So we're probably going to incorporate the chanterelles, we meaning him, <laughs> um, into the mac and cheese or into the... Kaspetzle. Kaspetzle. Yeah. <laughs> Cheese spetzel, I guess. I'm trying my best. Yeah. Cas. Is it case? Case. I case always spetzel. called it Cas. It's spelled I'm, K A S. I'm sure people are right? gonna, are gonna call me out on my misspelling. I speak Schwabish German. So but is is it spelled K A A S? Because I rem I feel like I've seen yeah. Like because listen, case I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not a total vegetarian, but I'm close to. So when I'm in Germany, you can imagine I'm eating a fair amount of Cas or case. It's, you got nothing <laughs> else to eat. <laughs> It's like meat sticks and, and, and sticks of meat and like more and meat. more cheese and oh meat. Oh my god! And, right at the gas station. And potatoes and and you know sour. Potatoes and cheese. cheese. I've been going there. I've probably done you know 10, 20 trips to Germany to tell my family. I'm and, probably right along at ten to twenty as well. I started going to Dortmund originally in the late nineties for the can of business. Nice. And I would go to that quite a bit. And then I became really good friends with Martin from Ruhr. And he's in Frank and Paul, really like little, like one of those neighborhoods where you really like, this is Germany. Totally. You're not in a big city. All the streets are like without GPS, forget about it. It's Forget lost. about it. You could get locked into dead ends like every city. It's like a maze. <laughs> no, it is. And it's because it's so old too, right? It used to be oh, for horse carriage. Oh, bro. Oh. <laughs> Definitely not designed for like Mercedes 500 SLs. No. So my, my cousin actually lives in, uh, in this little town called Biberach, which is your classic tiny little German town. Oh, yeah. They've been, he's been in the packaging business for, I don't know, 30 years. They do most of the food packaging across, across Europe. And they just recently, he was a super conservative. And I asked my mom about cannabis packaging, since that's what we do pretty much all day, is I make sure that I can bring <laughs> products like yours to market as cheap as possible with good packaging. Right. So I don't know if we mentioned it before, but... Merlin works with Canmar, formerly Namaste Technologies. Yeah. <coughs> He's kind of been a... I've, I've been involved since he kind of went over there. He's grown himself into a nice, strong position. And in fact, you know, my company, Embark, and Canmar have recently kind of created a, a little synergy. And we'll, we'll tell you more about that in the future as we announce. Yeah. So it's, it's really fun. And we get to work together as well. So it's even, even more fun, right? It's awesome, dude. Get some good hash products. That's, you know, that's what's really lacking in the Canadian market right now, I think, is like good products. People don't understand what good products <laughs> is, is. They're just listening to what other people are saying. And, well, and let's get yeah. into the real conversation because, you know, we know the very people who are, you know, basically mocking and belittling the Canadian regulatory framework. And I, I can understand where they're coming from. It's, it's, it's difficult and it's, it gets to me sometimes, but... Trying to bring great products to market in a regulated environment. It's not the same. It's not the same. And so it's almost like we're rewinding and starting back over with like, okay, now all of these new people who have, you know, and, and I think the thing about cannabis is that it was so, 
removed from everything for so long. And now that group of people, as much as they may have thought they wanted it open for everyone, I think they're having a hard time with it. Yeah, they are. And it's like, oh, who the fuck is this guy? Who does he think he yeah. is? He's like, he's everyone, dude. Like, we wanted cannabis to be for everyone, not locked in. Well, that's what I think about this micro program is gate is, but the problem is, is that those very regulations we talk about are holding back these micros. If you look at anyone's business plan that's doing micro, based on the square footage and the amount of investment, especially here in BC, mm -hmm. you're looking at a four to five year run rate before you start seeing a penny. That You have to have complete passion and have bank in the, in, in the pocket. Yeah. They put the right steps in place, I think, with Farmgate and all of that, but what they're missing is that the regulations for these small guys just don't make sense. They don't have the bankroll to, to no. lose the money to do it, and that's what we need. I'll be honest, they don't make much mean? sense for even some of the, the medium and bigger players. Yeah. Like, the regulations oh, work against it. Like it's your company, against my yeah, company. Like and it's, like, it's not just crushing small companies, and I get that, yeah, like, let's protect the most vulnerable players, but there's a lot of people in the middle of the board who really need protecting, too. Yeah. Like, they're just as likely to the, get eaten. But the reason that I say that the small, that fight for the small guys is because the big guys have such big rooms that they can't show enough love to their cannabis and grow yeah. good product. And for the products that you and me want to see in market, it takes the smaller guy that's, this is his life. If he doesn't have this crop come through as nice as possible, yeah. he's not going to be able to keep surviving. But they, they can't be growing bad cannabis on purpose. You know that. They're not. So that's <laughs> what I'm saying. And they have people like yeah. there are people like that know how to grow cannabis that are involved with these companies like these companies yeah. have you know like I mean DNA was involved with can Canopy why can't Canopy because growing herb that good on that, that level is so hard it's so it's a hard. big difference between 20 lights and 400 <laughs> it, it probably should have been grown pragmatically yeah. small like everyone starts out as a micro yeah. and the ones that gain milestones and success can apply and become maybe bigger I don't pretend to know the the cure for it I think no matter what you suggest someone would have a big fucking problem with it uh, like they always do and so I just try to navigate it the best that I can from a hash maker's perspective It's good, really difficult good in good out. It's got to be the recipe for good hash. Yeah, you know? right of course, but trying to find great material I'll be yeah. I'll be honest some of the first material we found like it was maybe our second or third batch It was Tropicana cookies and that shit was like some, Trop cookies it came fine. back like 81% like one of the microns. We tested all the microns. The 25 micron that people are like, oh, that's just food grade, throw it away. But the question 70 is, 70% did the supplier have, you have another batch for you the next time that was this That batch? wasn't really the question. No. No, not in this instance. And so it was regulations that have has kept and still is keeping that hash from market. And it's not ours, yeah. we, uh, oh, no. we told it. Yeah. But it's unbelievable. It's been over a year. And, and it's still not released. No. <laughs> oh, no. And it was that sounds like a QA nightmare. I would say it's at least a five star bubble. Oh, man. I remember seeing pictures. It was purple in the, in oh, the, in the picture that you took. It was, it was really insane. beautiful. Trop cookies is definitely in my. Like, I love cushions, but if I wanted to taste something fruity, I love chop cookies stuff. Yeah. Always yeah, tastes yeah. So good. Really nice. It tastes like smoking oranges. It's true. Yeah. It's just love. And in the concentrates, it's even. It's like the best. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> I love that Calio, you know, the first real orange flavored cannabis for me was Calio. And when I saw Calio, everything since tangerine and the vel right. what any orangey flavor, yeah. it to me, Reminds it always is first oh, yeah, Calio G. It's got that Calio in it. Yeah. Those were big fluffy orange. Yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, really nice. And the nicest grow I've ever been in in my life, it belonged to Shanti Baba, uh, Scott Blakey. And it was in Switzerland, in Bellinzona, and it probably would have been like 2000 or 2001. And I, I drove down to Bellinzona with Bushy Older Grower and Gypsy Nirvana. And we drove down to Bellinzona and we met Shanti Baba, and he walked us through a greenhouse of six foot tall, one or two days away from finishing Cali-O for like an acre like it was a huge greenhouse or a half an acre i don't know it was really big for real um nicest smell that i had ever smelled and it was neat that i got to share that with a uh, bushy older grower and uh gypsy nirvana wow that's a great story man i wish I oh dude and and i asked him i said 
how did you do this? Like, how, who's growing this? And he said, Rose Farmers, I don't hire smokers. He's like, I don't hire people from the cannabis. It's Rose, like Rose Farmers. Rose Farmers. He's like, they are like disciplined, meticulous, yeah. meticulous, aware, and it was their first crop of cannabis. And he said the only difference was instead of getting poked, don't get the resin in your eyes. That's the only real thing they had to consider. After that, it was just like botany, learn about yes. the plant. I mean, I think what happened too in the licensed producer world is that it was how many grams can you produce per square foot and that was your evaluation in the public markets and mm -hmm. it just ruined everything instead of how much quality can you pull out a square foot, right? <laughs> instead of these guys, what did they say? I saw an article the other day, 18% of total cannabis grown since legalization has been sold. Like That means there's a ridiculous amount of crap that's being written down, destroyed, or used for God knows what. Oh my God. Those horrible tasting pre-rolls that some people taste. <laughs> there should be a... a, a like a, you know, a facility that's like, you know, not for profit, but that takes all of that and just processes it into cannabinoids as just ingredient. And then not affect the market, but just like allow whoever has the best overview, probably the government, Health Canada, to figure out where this should go, but not ever allow it to be destroyed because it's yeah. too high of a value. I think I think what happens is for companies, it's probably ends up being cheaper to destroy it than write down in the loss of profit. <laughs> Unfortunately. <sighs> <It's gonna laughs> Imagine but you should crazy. be able to like yeah. instead of destroying, you should be able to choose to donate. Where it gets donated. That would be so good. That's, that's, that's a great system. That's dude. a good change. Like, wouldn't it be amazing? And then just be like, I don't know, like if you're worried, like make it free to people who don't have access to it at all, like homeless Put it people, for the medicine. The most vulnerable. Yeah. yeah, just make it like, if you don't want to profit off of it, and you're making companies the, destroy The destruction it, should go to Health Canada Labs to make it for me free medicine for the people. Let someone <laughs> benefit, for God's yeah. sakes. Yeah, imagine. All right, we went a little bit deep. <laughs> we did. And that's okay. We were talking about maybe doing this. <laughs> Um, I think it's time to make some uh, case bed. Some case bed. Yeah. Let's do it. Kitchen Sounds bound. Good. All right. All right. So serious. So. Uh, oh, we should introduce here. our next friend. Mike's here. Hey. What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. So I think the first step is to add onions to a hot pan. Ooh. Which is not hot. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's it looks pretty red underneath. Yeah, it's good. And then we're gonna have to caramelize these. And we'll do that, we'll set up for the cheese and the pasta. That's pretty serious. And the mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, there's. Uh, we're gonna go through that cheese for sure. Because yeah. there's like four or five Tear different ones. Get a little salt on it to sweat it. Man, don't sweat the onions, bro. <laughs> These guys always sweat the onions. At least they're white. <laughs> yeah, they deserve it. They do. Soon to be caramelized. And delicious. All right, here's our cheese collection. We got Fontina, uh, Carlsberg, aged Parmesan. Truffle Gouda and some Gruyere. Damn. Yeah. And we'll just grind there. these motherfuckers up right here. Just some cheese, huh? When you're lazy, you use the machine. <laughs> yeah, last week we were here with Patty. He was, he was cooking with us. Okay, and cool. Them all in at once. He's turning into a cooking channel. Yeah, all the cheeses at once. Well, as much as we can fit. I like it. Makes it easier, faster, on high. Damn. Just like that. This motherfucker doesn't really mess around. <laughs> <That's cheese. laughs> it's just like no fair warning or nothing. 
Just like fully cheese. homogenized five different cheeses. <laughs> That's the way to do it. We'll go for the pasta next. So, two cups of flour. I reckon I should stir this? No, nah, you want to let them just sweat a little, a little bit more. Stir it in a second. Look. If you don't mind, it'd be great. Crack four eggs in this thing. Is that first, you know, especially with a cast iron, that first like caramelization that gets made on the pan, mm -hmm. like that's like the best tasting stuff. Okay. <laughs> that's why you let it sit. Yeah, exactly. So four eggs in here. Use that real quick. Then we're gonna add in a half a cup of milk. You could use a vegetable-based milk too, or if you wanted to do this, I don't know. You could maybe use linseed, linseed water to replace the egg. Have you ever tried that? No. It's like the vegan egg. Oh, okay. So we're gonna get that nice and stirred up. Put it into the two cups. Make a little well in there. Just a little well. And then we can start mixing this. Yum. And made pasta, right? Yeah, these are really cool. It's really different from most pastas. It's like a special German pasta. They're super light and airy and fluffy. You'll see it's a, it's a special machine you can get to, to make it. Interesting. So now, uh, I think I'm intrigued. I think what we'll add in here now a little bit of salt. And the, the real secret to this pasta to get a lot of flavor is the nutmeg. Mm. That's the touch right there. Exactly what I said. Just a couple little scrapes in there. Ooh. Ooh. It's quite yummy. Yummy. A little nutmeg. A little mm. nutmeg. And if it, the, you want this dough to be a little bit runny, actually. So if it's not runny enough, would you mind grabbing me some milk out of the fridge? It should be in the door right there. Uh, right here. Perfect. Thank you. You can just add like a little, another dash of milk. Get it a little moisture. Just, yeah. just a dash. Because you'll see when it has to go through the pasta machine, you almost want it like a wet, wet I, dough. Gotcha. I feel like that's a very old statement, <laughs> a dash. <laughs> like how long have people been saying a just a dash? Just a dish or a dish. It might have been replaced by just a dab. Just yeah. a dab? <laughs> that's the, new, the 2021 version. We do our dabs <laughs> before our dashes. Yeah, that's the order. A dash of a dab. There's a lot of similarities here with hash making, actually. If you Absolutely. Just your the preparation, the SOP, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the awareness and the cleanliness. So I, now I do feel that as well. The pasta is done and mixed. We're just going to let that rest for like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Awesome. Add some butter in there. Ooh, butter makes everything more delicious. Butter makes everything more delicious. That's a fact. These onions are a big part of it. You don't want to go too hot, and you want to get them all nice and caramelized. I just like the sound and the look of things cooking. Mm -hmm. The ASMR aspect of it. Mm -hmm. The ASMR of cooking, yeah. Didn't Burger King just do one with a sizzle with ASMR? Oh, I'm sure. I feel like they've done. They started doing that a long time. Like, I I can't. I, I haven't had cable since '98. That's and they were definitely doing it in commercials before that. <laughs> this, you know, just those sounds. You want to know what one of the greatest sounds would be? Is the dab bit? You should do an ASMR of just the dab bit. Totally. The sucking of the of the bong. Yep. We'll turn our heat on for this as well. And this is the contraption, believe it or not. Is it what we make a pasta with? Yeah, exactly. It's pretty simple. Interesting. <laughs> um, 
Let's fry some mushrooms to put on top of this as well. Ooh, I like that idea. You want to fry some mushrooms, Brixton? It's pretty smell my dog. Get this pan going. Mushroom cooking is butter. <laughs> What's that? Your mushroom cooking butter? Gotta cook it with butter and then you can put a little grapeseed oil on it. And it goes for a higher heat. So Patty was saying, oh no, it was Sean, my friend Sean, who was saying, um, you'll get a lot more mushroom flavor if you don't uh, fry it with gar uh, garlic. Because yeah, the but... garlic overpowers the mushroom flavor oh, of I the mushroom. But garlic is so good. I, don't I know. I think the mix of them both is good. Oh, I'll take it that way. That's for sure. Yeah. I guess it, it's a neat way to say if you wanted to prepare a dish to have a more earthy, fungus-based flavor, you, yeah. you could you could do it like that. You know what, actually? We're going to cancel this pan right here. Oh, yeah? And we're going to cook the mushrooms in this pan to get the flavor of the onions in there. As you spoke like that, I think that's a great idea. Perfect. So that's the garlic? Yeah, a little bit of extra garlic in there. With the butter, the onion smells so good. Did you walk into it, bro? He had me a Gruyere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The truffle gouda is the one that smells the strongest. Smell the smell this of cheese, it smells so good. You can oh. smell the truffle right away, eh? That's awesome. We got the water going there. We're gonna wanna put some salt in the water too. Salt that shit like the sea. Salt? Salt that shit like the sea, huh? No. These come along. They're pretty good. For a sec here. Ready. Onions are pretty much ready. They look great. Gonna put them in the bowl? Yeah, let's just put them off to the side for right now while we cook the noodles because you want everything hot at once so it melts all the cheese. Ah, uh, yes, of course. And like you were saying, with all the flavor that we have left in this pan from the onions, we'll cook our chanterelles. Okay. A little bit of onion in there, get them fried up a bit. Some fresh onion that just went in. Yes, sir. And Ooh. all these beautiful chanterelles. Oops, what's up? I love to see the chanterelles. Look at that one. Yeah, this is a this is a yellow, I think. Oh no, it's oh, not. No, that looks no a that's giant a yellow gold. foot. Oh, yeah, a giant yellow, yeah. It'd be a very small gold. So you don't want them to move too much. Oh, that's the sound. The pepper. Mm. I think I'm just gonna have these on the side just because they're so amazing flavor. And I'll do a, I'll do them with whiskey this time. Yeah. That's super good. Yeah. Instead of gin. Instead of gin, we will do whiskey. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of. We'll do tamari and whiskey. It's pretty tasty. There's his whiskey. <laughs> Black label. Oh, I do our pasta. So getting the water out of these mushrooms and onions. Really, it's oh. coming from the mushrooms. You know what, actually, though? We should do the salad first because we're going to have time once the noodles are ready. we got to like put everything together. So right. we'll start with the salad. Hey Mike, you want to go yeah. in the drawer right here? Second one down, and there's a cheese grater. That would be amazing. A little bit of cucumber on there as well. This one right here, thank you very much. Very cute. A little cucumber on there. My favorite, a bit of carrot. Condonement of salad. Good yeah. stuff, salad. And carrots, cucumbers. insides. <laughs> Let's go and make a quick salad dressing. Do I want to give these a stir? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that. Mike actually knows how to handle the camera. Everyone will be like, why, why did the camera get so much better? I'm the bubble man, uh, the camera. It's bubble man 
of sucks. These look great, man. You want them to just spread out again evenly? They still yeah, that'd right? be perfect. A little dressing up of the salad, a little olive oil. Olive oil. Some white balsamic. Some classic balsamic. And then the secret to every Canadian's oh, yes. pantry is maple syrup, right? Oh, maple yeah. syrup. <laughs> Not just maple syrup. <laughs> Who doesn't want maple syrup? Awesome. We had some of Sean's uh, grape syrup he gave us. Yes, too. Yeah, yeah, really really nice. We had pancakes today and yeah. used it. Our salt is lovely. I'm loving it. Alright, a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Bunch of maple syrup is good in there. It really cuts the acid, right? You know, like when it's too too acidic a salad dressing, but a bunch of maple syrup or any really sugar will make it a lot softer. It balances the acid. And then a little bit of Dijon mustard or a nice amount as an emulsifier. And that'll be our salad dressing. Oh. So that's on the side. Let's stir our mushrooms. This is the whiskey portion. Of now they're nice and fried. So we'll put a little bit of that in there, a little bit of the tamari for the saltiness. You can see there's a whole bunch of flavor left on the bottom of that pan from the onions, from, the, from this, and you smell that tamari, right? Put a little bit in there. Let it boil a sec, then go. Puts yeah. a nice little crisp on them. And it's not for the, faint of heart, for the faint of heart. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. Do it a few yeah. times yeah, before you. Nice, very nice. Do it with a high ceiling if you're going to do it anywhere, right? I'm not condoning. <laughs> that was a one time, one try. You know it. And now that puts a nice caramelization on these things. They're going to be delicious. Yeah, they look beautiful. That's that. Now our water is boiling. Let's sure make your pasta. So one last spin. Let's see the consistency in here. Pasta. That is nice and runny. You want to make sure that there's no lumps and that your pat the gluten is really binded. You can see now that the gluten's binded together. And that's why you want to wait and let it rest. Right? Did you put extra gluten in there for me? Extra gluten just for you, my friend. Nice. All right, let's turn it. Let's switch places here. Let me see if I can get a bigger spoon. You're just gonna okay. scoop a bunch in there. So now we slap this on top of here so that it's nice and straight. Now this is where it gets kind of crazy because it's boiling water and the pasta's cooking while you're putting it in, but we'll, we'll do our best on this one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Manual madness. As you can see, it, it's very, very sticky. It looks very sticky. Now you kind of want to just get that in there. Would you mind sliding those mushrooms off? Uh, slide it off the heat. Slide oh, it up there. Okay. Yeah. And then as we get in there, this is where you want to start sliding this thing back and forth. And if you can see in the pot, look at those nice noodles being made, filled with air. So they're super fluffy. Jesus. Yeah, and then now we load in some more. That's crazy. Double. This is a trip, dude. <laughs> it just seems. Hey, Mike, while I'm doing this, would you be able to uh, grab this and put those mushrooms in there so we don't overcook them? That's so they go in amazing. and then they like form with like bubbles in them, so they're all fluffy. Yeah. So they're they're hollow on the inside, like a like a macaroni a little bit almost, right? Wow. It's almost like they're hollow. It's like they're very, very fluffy because it's an egg noodle, right? Yeah, yeah. And then that last bit of dough always gives you a hard time. 
to do the best you can, get it all off of there, not at the expense of wasting your other noodles, because you don't want them overcooked. Well, okay. But look how beautiful those things are. Yeah, those are some nice noodles. They're actually really long this time. They're usually uh, shorter than this. I did a, we did a stellar job here. They're like actual pasta noodles. <laughs> usually they come out a little bit shorter. <laughs> I appreciate the we, Merlin, yeah, but... Uh, we did it, man. I don't know what I did. <laughs> you like uh, maestroed that shit. I can't even believe it. It was like some mastery. I was like, this is Jean-Luc. It's a French kitchen. <laughs> All right, those are pretty much cooked because noodles don't take long, especially fresh ones. Beautiful. Got a little strainer right here. Make sure everything's good there. One last stir. So Kim is, is always in crazy meals. There we go. Strain all that out right there. And now I know a lot of people like to run it with cold water to kind of get those starches out But you want to keep as much heat as possible because that's going to be expen uh, essential to make it melt all your cheeses Next stage here That was quick too, you just brought it back for like yeah. five minutes Yeah, yeah, it's real quick. Super easy pasta to make So now we get our nice pot here Get our pasta in there Get our onions in there with all that butter and onion deliciousness. This is gonna be the best mac and cheese you guys have ever I mean, had. I'm yeah, telling you. I was coming over for mac and cheese. I heard and then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to mix in those onions, get all that flavor and butter distributed in there. I'm taking a couple quarts just so I can check my weight. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Okay, the now it's some delicious oniony noodles. Now we start with the cheese. Get it in there. You can smell right away the terps of those cheeses coming off, especially that truffle cheese. Cheese terps. Cheese terps. It's probably the first terps when people started fermenting stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. That's insane. And that a little is, more cheesy, but you gotta get that cheesy. <laughs> It's over the top. It's totally <laughs> over the top. Let's just put another cup of this in. But which one was that last one? You mozzarella. Just the mozzarella. to have the stringy. I think that we're going to... Should we mix that in? Ah, you know what? I think so. I think dude. we will. The way you just did that with everything was yeah. like... Let's, get the, let's make this next level spetzel for the bubble, for bubble man's world. It's a mushroom spetzel. Yeah, <laughs> mushroom dude. spetzel just for bubble man's world. Dude, that you handpicked the mushrooms for. And we handmade the noodles for them. This one's all done special. Look at the cheesy goodness in there. It just smell. You can, you can hear it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at it. It just get like goopy. Yeah. <laughs> and now as it's going to melt. That's this is the key. Why you wanted to keep the heat straight out mm -hmm. is it's because this next few minutes turns it into a sauce kind of. And we want to hit it up with a bunch of pepper. Pepper is delicious in this. You got food in there. <laughs> We're gonna have our own food network, Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> Cooking with Merlin. Yeah. Whole bunch God of pepper. Damn. A bunch of salt. Oh yeah. We're gonna go gluttonous, right? I think we're well on our way. Maybe we pass gluttonous like three milestones back. Look at all that string cheese. Half a pound of cur. Uh, half a pound of cheese back. We passed. Uh, God, yeah, there we go, <laughs> and then we're gonna do some of this. A little bit of chopped parsley for the top of that. Now we'll grab some tongs here. Let's mix our salad. Dressing we made earlier. Tongs are the best for salad. Let's make one little. This is awesome, dude. Thanks, bud. Pumpkin Come over seeds? for dinner, a little bit of pumpkin seed, why not? I like pumpkin seeds, all sorts of different seeds in salad is good. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
There we go. All right, let's uh, get you another place, man. All right. Yes. All right. Wow, that was uh, quite a production. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty damn good. It's I'm excited. Ridiculous. It's a great Sunday, Sunday tradition. I feel like you should start us off. Let's do it. Gotcha. Now let's look how cheesy this is now. <laughs> it's, it's actually... Let's start myself off with a little salad. Oh, wow, you're giving me that too. Thank you. I'm going to say start yourself off. But thank you, sir. That looks so good. That's ridiculous, dude. Sure. I gotta do one more the top hat. I guess we'll just go back for seconds. Yeah, exactly. I'm definitely gonna be crushing some seconds. Oh, the aroma is so good. It's so good, man. Yeah. I feel like I just my mouth is just watering. Like hard. Yeah. As always, Merlin, let us take the first few bites. Let them know what we think. It's so cheap. Mike's here, he can give us his mm. uh, Those noodles, wow. the five cheeses that you put in. Mmm, that's incredible. <laughs> I've never had nothing cheese like this. Me neither. Mm. It's elevated in a big way. Even taste the mushrooms. So good. You'd expect them to be a little more subdued, but. Mm-hmm. Mm. The texture of the mushroom is nice. So nice, too. The noodles are very unique. They taste so fluffy, eh? Mm-hmm. Definitely creates that. I don't that. actually need to put pass like that. Straight into the boiling water as you shred it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Me neither. I can honestly say I've never seen that, that thing. Whatever you call it. Spetzel maker. No, I'll remember that. <laughs> For the special, special, special? Is it special? Special. Special, special noodles. For the special, so you see it a lot special locations. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Just the special locations. Oh my god. <laughs> Only sold in special that was locations. That's a pretty good dad joke, actually. <laughs> okay, dad jokes. Is, I got those. Alright, I'll put this thing. Loads and loads. Alright, well. I've never had mac and cheese like this. The onions are just perfect. You mm -hmm. weren't kidding, like how they're caramelized? Yeah, it's so good. This is like, I've been having this dish for my grandma since I'm a kid. I'm nice. trying to make it. Yeah, <coughs> super easy. We'll put the recipe in the bottom of this. Uh, yeah, we'll start putting the recipe in the bottom because Merle's not really measuring anything out. He just <laughs> does it by feel and whatnot. But um, yeah, thanks for joining us while we eat the Spetzel. Mm -hmm. This has been a Spetzel occasion. Spetzel occasion. Stolen from Mike. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. See you later. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for following.